Hey there Fruit Brewers, today we're going to be making two meats. We're going to be using some raspberry honey to test out two different types of yeast. Now the two different types of yeast that we're going to be using is going to be a bit of an experiment. We're going to be using a wine yeast, the K1B1116, and we're going to be using um, Mangrove Jack's dry yeast, and this is a beer yeast. It's going to be a Belgian ale yeast. So we're going to be testing these two yeasts out to see which one finishes faster and which one at the end of the day tastes better. Now I have a couple of theories about these two yeasts. So one of them is going to be um, going up to a higher percentage ABV. And that higher percentage ABV is going to be the wine yeast, while the uh, Belgian yeast is going to be a little bit lower. So we're going to see what the ending percentage is um, for the alcohol content on them are. It's going to be interesting to see if the um, beer yeast is a lower ABV and whether or not the lower ABV makes it a little bit thicker and has a little bit of a sweeter taste to it whereas the KV116 might end up to be a little bit drier. So that's what we're going to be testing out today. So we've got one of the meads ready here. This is the um, wine mead. Um, I've mixed it up as much as I can. I don't actually have a, have a mixer with me, so there's some sitting at the bottom here. But if you are interested in whether or not that affects the way it ferments, uh, Man Made Mead actually has a really good video on how it doesn't actually make a difference. Um, so I mixed it up as much as I can, but if you can't mix it up or you don't have a way to mix it up really well, then you can actually just leave it like this and it'll be just fine. But um, so this is the wine one that we have going here. Now I'm going to make the beer yeast mead. Um, again, using the same exact honey as the other one. Today I'm using um, Arrowhead water just because I didn't want to um, have to boil anything so this is already sterile and clean and so I don't have to worry about making sure um, it's sterile and clean for this experiment. Um, one of the things that you can do is you don't actually need to buy this and that can actually save you some money. Instead you can actually go ahead and boil your filtered water and that should work out just fine. You don't actually need a full gallon of water because you're going to have some honey in there that's going to offset it. Okay, we're using three pounds of honey for every gallon of water, but that's not an exact measurement because you can't really fit both of those in a one, in a one gallon fermenter. I highly suggest that you use yeast nutrient because honey doesn't have a lot of nutrients for the yeast to eat through. So the yeast nutrient makes it so that the yeast can actually work work harder and faster. So I put one, one, uh, one teaspoon of yeast in each of these to get the yeast filled. So both meads are ready to go to get this mead experiment started. I went ahead and took the um, gravity, the initial gravity of these, and I got point. 0, 4, 0 for each of these. So these are both starting off at the same level. Um, some of the reasons why I decided to choose these two yeasts is because they actually ferment at higher temperatures so you don't need to worry about having any t any temperature control. So you can go ahead and just um, let them both go and it's not going to get too hot and kill off the yeast. So that's a good thing about these two yeasts that I chose. Um, you know, there may be differences between different uh, yeasts that are being used, different uh, different strains of yeasts, but this is just a specific experiment between these two strains. So we'll go ahead and see what these turn out to be. Okay, 
it may have just been a few seconds for you, but for me it's been about two months. And we have had a pretty much a, a very good culmination of this experiment with a lot of lessons learned. Um, so after having run this for two months, these meats uh, have settled down. As you can see, the bottom has some truck going on here. And we also have the, uh, the meat or the honey has mixed up really well in here. And you can see it's getting, getting to the point where it's clearing up. So today what I wanted to do was do a little bit of a test, um, taste it, see how it tastes. But then I'm also going to be transferring this to secondary for a little bit more bulk aging and um, clearing it out even more. Um, right now this looks, we're looking like we're clearing out quite a bit here, which is pretty good, but it, this can definitely clear more and we want to get rid of uh, that sediment at the bottom there. Um, so some of the interesting things that I noticed, and I, I've got some notes here, I'll pull up on the screen. I actually posted a article online um, with the notes included on there. It's actually about uh, yeast and yeast health. Um, after having done this experiment, I came across a, the fact that yeast health is very, very important when it comes to mead. Um, so one of the things that I tried out here uh, is I added half a teaspoon more uh, yeast after about a month or so um, to see if I could get it to kind of restart and re go, re, uh, re-ferment. Um, so what had happened initially is both, um, both yeasts with the same honey and everything pretty much uh, leveled out at the 20 day mark. So both of them, uh, they didn't end at the same level. Uh, the, the Belgian actually ended at 1.036 gravity and the KV116 ended at a 1.033 gravity which actually didn't dry out the way that I expected actually with using such a high level yeast. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with uh, yeast health. So if you go ahead and check out that, um, that article I wrote, uh, you can go ahead and learn a lot more about yeast health and I'll be implementing a lot more of that stuff in the future. But they leveled out at about 20 days or so. So at that point, after a month of having them hit the same uh, numbers, for each of them, I decided to throw in some uh, half a teaspoon more of yeast nutrient and for both of them, they kind of started getting a little bit more active again, um, but the KV116 actually got way more active than the, um, the Belgian yeast. So the, the wine yeast basically started kind of going crazy, um, but what the interesting thing is it actually leveled out only about 0.001 less than it was before. So we're ending at a point 1.032, whereas the um, Belgian yeast ended again at just 1.036. Uh, so not much really extra happened. And I wonder if that's just, be, just because I added it after a month, if I had done more of a, um, a step yeast nutrient addition, then it may have uh, gone a little bit further but uh, that's for another experiment. But as for the initial experiment of which one would end first, to my surprise, they pretty much ended at around 20 days at the same time. So that was an interesting development that I did not expect, but that's only one part of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer these to secondary, siphon off a little bit so that we can taste a little bit of each one to see after two months, which one does taste better? So these are the meads post-transfer into secondary. I'm gonna go ahead and let these uh, go go and age for a couple more months uh, for bottling. See if we get some more sediment at the bottom. They're pretty much a little bit equal now. I think the wine yeast has a little bit more, just because the the uh, Belgian yeast had more trub at the bottom. Um, and actually I poured myself a little bit extra for the wine yeast one. So this is the Belgian and this is the wine yeast. Having a quick uh, smell here. The uh, Belgian has a, 
not too much aroma to it. This, yeah, this smells like a uh, more honey aromatic to it, whereas the Belgian has a little bit of harsher fruity smell to it. A lot harsher. I think this, because this went out swinging when it was fermenting very vigorously versus the wine one was a lot more gentle. So I wonder if that's what made the uh, Belgian a little bit harsher. But we'll go ahead and give it a taste. Hmm. Actually, that's not bad. The smell doesn't doesn't have as much aroma to it, but the taste is actually not as harsh as I thought it would be. Oh, it looks like the Belgians bubbling up a little bit. I wonder if adding some a little bit of oxygen to that uh, causing it to ferment some. We'll we'll find out. But uh, Belgian actually this tastes pretty good. This one smells good. Let's see how it tastes. Actually, the wine one, harsher on the front end, subtle, got some honey notes on the back end. Overall, the wine actually does taste harsher, whereas the Belgian smells harsher. So really, really interesting development there. Um, to be honest, I think I would actually want to drink the Belgian more than I would want to drink the wine. I think the wine is a little bit hot, needs to mellow out a little bit more. Tasty. Does need more time. Belgian. A little bit of harshness to it, but uh, overall drinkable. I think they were both pretty drinkable, but definitely both of them I think need a little bit of extra time. But the Belgian does come up as tasting a little bit more ready than the wine one does. So interesting. Well, thanks for uh, checking us out, uh, checking out this uh, little test I've done. This test is by no means a exhaustive. Uh, test of how well an ale yeast versus a wine yeast does when it comes to fermenting um, uh, when it comes to fermenting honey. Um, so you know there's definitely tons of different yeasts out there, tons of different possibilities. Another one to try uh, fermenting with is a Kvyk yeast. Kvyk? Hopefully I'm saying that right. That yeast, uh, my friend actually did a brew with that yeast. Um, and that one actually tastes pretty good, so we'll see how that ends up uh, turning out. But as for this Belgian yeast, I think it's uh, doing pretty good versus the, um, the wine yeast. Might need a little bit more time, but uh, overall uh, both of them are on their way to being pretty good meats.